All right. Good morning and uh, welcome, everyone. Let's begin th this morning's class with a word of prayer. And uh, I want to request one of us from the class to please go ahead and lead in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling each one of us to gather here to study from your word. We also thank you for the mission trip that for your journey mercies and for the learnings that all of us have had. We pray for your presence and peace as we continue to meditate, learn, and be strengthened in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Akhil. Uh, so we looked at an overcomer's lifestyle in the last week's class. And we also saw that God has given us certain spiritual weapons that we can use against the enemy. We are in warfare. And uh, each believer needs to learn how to use every single weapon that has been handed to us. We understood about the armor of God. And we said that in order to resist the devil, we have to put on the armor and uh, stand against the schemes and plots of the evil one. There are other weapons as well. So we said as long as a believer is walking by faith, it becomes very difficult for Satan to that believer. So carrying faith in our hearts at all times is essential. Then, of course, is the word of God. Okay, then, of course, is the word of God. We know that the word of God has been spoken of as a weapon. And we saw how Jesus um, speaks and the sword comes out of his mouth in the book of Revelation. So that gives us an understanding that we have to use the sword from our mouths or speak the word of God. Okay? And that is something each one has to develop in. And we spoke about that. We spoke about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is very powerful. And we said that the enemy does not like the uh, thought of the blood of Jesus. Why is it so? Why doesn't the enemy like us talking about the blood of Jesus? We, we discussed many, many points about what the blood has done for us. Tell me at least one or two why, why the enemy does not like to hear about the blood of Jesus. Mike, please. It cleanses us from all sin and it's the yes. most powerful uh, yes. weapon. Correct. So it cleanses us from all sins. So that shows us that um, enemy cannot accuse us anymore, right? Because Jesus has justified us. And that is why um, he does not want to talk about the blood of Jesus. Because there is power to justify the believer in the blood of Jesus. Anything else that the blood does which is so powerful that Satan does not want to talk about the blood? Uh, sorry? Yeah, it brought us near to God. It brought us into the kingdom of God. So it, it is like it's a symbol of our redemption, isn't it? The blood of our redemption. That means we were brought out of slavery from Satan. Satan was ruling over us, but no longer can he do that anymore because we now belong to the kingdom of God and we've come under God's leadership. So you can imagine it's a big loss for the evil one. And so when he thinks about the blood of Jesus, he is not happy because he lost all of us as believers. Right? So this is the victory of the blood of Jesus. And we must speak about the victory. We must speak about the work that the blood has done. You know, the forgiveness, the redemption, the sanctification, the cleansing, the part that it becomes what has sealed the new covenant. So there are many truths. We can just study the blood of Jesus, right? Like for days and years and I don't know how long because the, that much work the blood has done for us. And uh, it's very powerful against the enemy. So use the knowledge of the blood of Jesus against Satan. Today, let's go to um, the fifth point here, which is about the name of Jesus. Okay. So very similar to the powerful blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus is very powerful. 
when we study about the name of Jesus, there are references given in our notes. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. You can refer to it later on. But we understand that the name of Jesus is more excellent than any other uh, created thing, you know, that, because everything else is created, right? God is uncreated, but everything else is created. The name of Jesus is greater than any created thing. Like pick anything that is created. But the name of Jesus is more excellent. When we study the book of Hebrews, we understand that even greater than the name of angels, God gave Jesus the excellent name. So the name of Jesus is an excellent name or the best name. Uh, and nobody has a name like Jesus. Okay, And uh, we, we see that the name of Jesus is a worthy name. It is an honorable name. We also see that it is a name above every other name. Okay? We read about that in Philippians chapter 2. About the life of Jesus. Okay. And the fact that he humbled himself. Because he humbled himself and he was obedient to the cross, God gave him a name above every other name, which is the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus, we said, is excellent. It is worthy. It is above every other name. And the name of Jesus is great because it represents the person of Jesus. So whenever we say Jesus, right, or Imagine with me, if we call out somebody's name, if you say, uh, you know, Usain Bolt, what do you think of? You think of somebody who's running like an athlete, right? You think, or you call out some president's name. You think of somebody who's in politics, a leader. So similarly, when we speak the name of a person, it says so much about that person, what kind of a person they are, what are they involved in. Uh, and it's a description of that person. And so when we say the name of Jesus, we know that the Lord Jesus, who is the very son of God, who lived a blameless life, holy life, he worked many miracles, he, uh, you know, he, he did so many wonderful works, God's works. Okay? And also he had the mandate of redeeming us. So he, he suffered he died a very painful death on the cross, uh, but that is actually our victory. And uh, not only did he die, but he also rose from the dead, isn't it? He rose from the dead. And we have salvation in the name of Jesus. And now, if you think of the Lord Jesus, where is he now, right now? Seated in heaven, right? So this is the entire picture of um not the entire picture, but at least a glimpse of who Jesus is, what he has done on the earth, what he is doing right now. So whenever we say the name of Jesus, that greatness comes to our minds. Okay, So whenever we speak the name of Jesus, we have to think of who he was. And that again, Satan does not like. So when you say Jesus, he is reminded of everything that Jesus did and how Jesus won the victory over the enemy. Okay. And so the name of Jesus, again, is so powerful because it's representing a powerful person. There are ample scriptures that describe many other things which are there in the name of Jesus. Scripture says there is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. In the early church, the apostles, they went and they preached to the people. They said, repent and be baptized. There is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus. Your sins will be forgiven you. So they were preaching the forgiveness of sins, which is there in the name of Jesus. So again, the name of Jesus is so powerful because we know that our sins are forgiven. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. So I'm just going to read out all the things that are there in the name of Jesus, right? Also, Prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. And the interesting part is that it was Jesus himself who said, I, you know, I am going to the Father and uh, after I go to the Father, you've still not asked me anything, but you ask me. Okay, and you ask in my name. 
he was the one who taught us to do that and the father will answer you so how do prayers get answered because we are asking in the name of jesus got it so there is so much that is happening through the name of jesus there is forgiveness there is salvation prayers are being answered in the mighty name of jesus and uh, there is healing in the name of jesus if you remember at the gate beautiful in, uh, in the book of acts there is a man who is lame he's 40 years he's lame he's sitting in front of the temple then peter and john they go there and he's asking them you know give me some money he's begging give me some money uh, but they look at him and they say silver and gold we don't have but what we have you know we give to you in the name of jesus rise up and walk so how did they release healing or how did the miracle happen they just said in the name of jesus okay so it's so powerful when we speak the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus sometimes we just have to speak the name and the power of the name is going to be released there is healing in the name of jesus so at times the holy spirit might tell us just speak my name okay all we have to do is by faith speak that name then you will see the power of the name being released there is healing in the name of jesus there are miracles in the name of jesus okay there is authority right authority we understand we we speak in the name of jesus um in mark 16 when jesus was saying that you know at some point the disciples will go those who believe in believe in him will go to the ends of the earth and make disciples he said in my name remember in my name mark 16 verses 17 18 you shall cast out demons okay and in my name all the things that we do for jesus we do it in his name okay uh, and in the name of jesus when we go to do ministry of all kinds miracles take place how are miracles taking place in the name of jesus so it's all there in the name we don't understand how can it be there in the name but it is there healing is there salvation is there forgiveness is there okay power is there miracles are there so with that faith when we speak the name of jesus it's a weapon against satan so there are miracles in the name of jesus there is authority in the name of jesus and his name brings his presence we say right when two or three are gathered in the name of jesus there i am in the midst of them so how does jesus or the presence of jesus come in our midst when we gather in the name of jesus so his presence is there his name brings his presence so these are all things that we have to understand of course there is power in the name of jesus and the most important thing that we have to remember in the case of deliverance right deliverance uh, and the believer's authority is the power of attorney the power of attorney we have discussed this that if let's say uh, you know we we send a representative to the bank we give a letter and we say let the transactions be done because i have authorized that person so they are carrying what is known as power of attorney so even though i am not there they are going in the name of nancy and the work gets done because i have given the power of attorney now it's the same thing for the believer you and i are doing the works of god on the earth in the name of jesus so the works get done as if see jesus is not here physically but his name is the authority that we can carry to do the works of jesus and i think i've said this uh, last time also whenever we speak the name of jesus especially in the case of uh, let's say casting out a demon right we say uh, i command you come out in the name of jesus it's as if jesus is speaking to that demon okay not that we are jesus but the power of attorney is like that the authority is like that 
I'm speaking the name of Jesus. And what I'm saying is, I'm a representative. Jesus sent me. <laughs> Even though he's not here, it's as if he's there. So you better listen. So I command you, in the name of Jesus, come out. So that's the understanding. So this is a weapon that the enemy has. Enemy cannot stand. And we must use it. Use the name of Jesus as a weapon against Satan. Okay. Any any questions about that? Any um, additional thoughts from your side? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Shani, I can see your hand raised. Yeah, I have a question about um, Jesus Christ. So, where do I get the Christ from? I know Christ is not last. Not Christ is not his last name. What does that mean? And um, who came up with Jesus Christ? Okay. Yeah. So, um, it is said that culturally, um, in the times that Jesus lived in, they would have the second name based on uh, who. You know who that person was, like Simon the Tanner. You read about Simon the Tanner in uh, the book of Acts. So he's a Tanner professionally, and so he's called Simon the Tanner. So there can be a lot of Simons. Simon Peter. Okay, we we recognize. Okay, so we are actually talking about Peter. So there are James. Uh, there are two James. Okay, one James who who is killed in Acts chapter 12, but then there is another leader of the church, James, uh, and tradition has it that he was called as James the Just. So usually what they would do is they would give a second name to identify that person because there could be many James, uh, you know, people named James. So similarly, when it comes to Jesus, uh, there were there could have been others and there were others with the name Jesus, right? So then to identify the Jesus whom we are talking about, because he is the Messiah. So Christ is nothing but the Messiah. Uh, and uh, so he was given the second name as the Christ. People knew him uh, by the second name. And especially in the early church, that's when I think it kind of became... Um, more popular to call Jesus as the Christ, Jesus Christ. Uh, does does that help, Shani? Yeah, I understand. So basically, back in those days, like there may be other people the name Jesus, but that specifically yeah. identifies him as the Messiah, or like you Correct. said, in time. Okay, yeah, I understand it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, most likely, I think before Jesus died, we know that um, they say, "Oh, this is Jesus, the son of Joseph, carpenter's son." So they recognize people uh, not just by their first names, but they used to have a second name or uh, like you know something associated which spoke about that person. So that's why later on Jesus Christ made it more clear which Jesus we are talking about. Yes, Christ uh, refers to like the Anointed One, no? Which one? The name Christ refers ah. to the Anointed One. Yeah. Jesus is Savior, and the Messiah is the Anointed One. So, Savior, the Anointed One. Yeah, good. Yes, please go ahead. So, when we pray, the, we don't have to say Jesus Christ. We could just say the name of Jesus. That's good enough, like it says yeah. in the Bible, right? Yes. Okay. So, we, we know whom we are uh, talking about. So if you say in the name of Jesus, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other queries about the name of Jesus? Yes. Okay, so you're saying sometimes it's working, sometimes you feel it's not working when you speak the name of Jesus. Um, see, many factors can be there. Like, uh, I mean, it, it's not only about faith, right? So maybe you have the faith. Sometimes faith could be lacking, even though we are saying, uh, you know, be healed in Jesus' name. We could be lacking in faith. 
we are using the name of jesus but faith is lacking got it faith is less uh, or let's say faith is there but there can be other reasons for example it depends on every situation uh, joseph so in that situation we can uh, we can examine it individually maybe on the other side that person still has unforgiveness in their hearts so you what you are praying is effective but because there is unforgiveness it's not working you got it so there can be so many reasons why sometimes even though we speak the powerful name of jesus we don't see immediate result so don't let that worry you you keep continuing if it didn't work that time pray rise up more in faith do it the second time do it the third time keep doing it sure thank you yeah good question anything else about the name of jesus yes emmanuel okay okay yeah emmanuel means god with us so at that point when jesus was born god came as a man right so that is why he was termed as god with us he came to dwell with the human beings yeah it's just a description of jesus so yeah yes yeah please go ahead oh, okay I'm um, also too, like you were saying, I guess somebody was asking sometimes when they use a name, it doesn't work. You were saying about unforgiveness. I was also told like condemnation, feeling bad about your past, um, shame, um, insecurity, inferiority, all those things can also, I was told is that true hinder in terms of, you know, things happening when you want to pray for somebody or when you use the name of Jesus and things aren't working. Is that true? That's what I was told. Yes, it could affect us because this would affect our faith so you're talking about not being rooted in our identity in christ so if we are not strong in our identity obviously we are we are um, low in our faith when we are facing the enemy at that point so though we speak the name of jesus uh, we still don't see the results okay thank you yeah Thank you. Um, so I've heard people say this. I don't know how far, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it, it's not about it being true, but they say that when you speak the name of Jesus, we see its power, the power of the name of Jesus in many situations. But especially when you're casting out demons, right? Uh, you really see how powerful the name of Jesus is because when you speak the name of Jesus, demons are subject to that name they cannot like if you command them in the name of jesus they have to listen they have to so when you see the way the kingdom of darkness responds to the name of jesus it's really like an eye opener sometimes we are using the name of jesus so carelessly that should not be the case right like very lightly and in the old uh, testament we know in the instructions that were given commands which were given to the people they were told don't use the name of god in vain right but sometimes we do that unfortunately even among believers we simply say jesus and holy spirit this and that just like that for fun but that should not be the case we should not use god's name lightly in fact it's a command we should never do that right so be very careful when you use the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, Sister Gertrude? Sister, I have a question. They say yes. when uh, uh, when you are uh, casting out demons, can they enter you? Uh, can they enter you? Is yeah. your question? See, if there is an open door, they can. But if there's no open door, they won't. But sometimes they're not sure whether you have open door. <laughs> See, in general, if you're walking as a sincere believer, don't worry, there won't be any open door. Okay, thank you, sister. Yeah, so don't worry about that. All doors are shut only. Okay. 
Right. Good question. Any other thoughts, questions? Name of Jesus. Sister, sister. Yes, yes, sister Lucy. Now my daughter is in the hostel mm -hmm. where she sanctified her room, but the other roommate she brings in all the um, idols and their uh, frame, frame, frames and all. Mm -hmm. uh, how to go about it? Uh, mm -hmm. See, sister, um, it is true that uh, through objects, um. You can have spirits dwelling right in objects yes, and yes, they yes. become an access um, mm. if, if they are around you but see mm. in a situation like yours where a mm. room is being shared by two people you can't tell your uh, yes. you know roommate take your things uh, don't keep all these things here because it's as much their room as it is your room so yes. in such a situation i think one should not worry so much you just pray Speak the protection of God over yourself and uh, walk by faith. We said faith is a shield, isn't it? So yes, have the faith that nothing will affect you, nothing will touch you. So okay. even if there are idols and you're unable to get it out, it okay. shouldn't bother you actually. Uh, in fact, it should be the other way. They should be worried that you're there in their room. Right? So, <laughs> yes. yeah, because we are carrying the kingdom. We are kingdom carriers yes. and the power of God. So, yes, sister. Yeah. Thank you, sister. It okay. helped me a lot. I was All just right. worrying about it little. No, 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 no. Okay, I mean, thanks. the kingdom of light is more powerful yes, than yes. the kingdom of darkness. Yes, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shani, I'll come to you just a moment. We have a question. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, why there is changes in like in English, Jesus, Hindi, Yeshu, in other languages like Telugu, I think, Yasaya, Yahushu, like that? Uh -huh. Why there is change in Jesus' name? Yes. Okay. Why so, you are not calling Jesus in Hindi also? Hindi, yeah. So why are there uh, uh, name like the name is in different languages? It sounds different. Why? That I actually don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I feel like it won't lack power, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like even other names, right? Other Hebrew names also change. Like Peter is so different in Hindi. It is different in Tamil, other languages. So yeah, it's like that for all the names. But thankfully, it does not affect the power that the name of Jesus carries. Sure. I don't know if you're satisfied with my answer, but you can do more research on that. Fine. Uh, Shani, please tell me. Yeah, I just have a question because I thought that if somebody has the baptism of you know Holy Ghost, the baptism, the evidence speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. that demons can't. I Maybe mean, I just need clarification that demons that can't get in them because they're filled. It's not an empty vessel. But for what you're saying, that a believer, um, I guess, can happen if there's an open door, like if they're doing some sin. Can you like clarify that? Because I'm a little confused. Yes. So. Even if a believer is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they can be demonized. It's a funny, it's a very crazy thing for us to accept. But it can happen because we are filled with the Spirit, right, in our, in our spirit. But if we have strongholds of the mind, uh, demons can dwell there. Got it? So I'll just put it in a simple way. See, we can have a tongue-talking believer, okay? Tongue-talking, prophesying, whatever, other other gifts you use, that kind of a believer. But that same believer can be very lustful. That same believer can speak all kinds of evil from his mouth. And sometimes we, we look at believers who are behaving like this and we think, what? how can this be? This person is speaking in tongues. But look at the life that they are living. It's so sad. But scriptures talk about carnality okay being a carnal believer so even though they are born again baptized in the holy spirit maybe even filled with the holy spirit overflowing with the holy spirit signs wonders miracles you still see uh, the the manifestation of the flesh through their lives and that is the saddest part it's very sad because it uh, not only brings down the name of jesus 
it discourages other believers isn't it and we we um yeah especially young believers they get discouraged when they see that there's no difference between an unbeliever in the world and a spirit filled believer okay so shani i hope that helps yes i did cuz i was wondering why some people can prophesy speak in tongues but then <laughs> act a certain way and do this that that explains it very well thank you yeah that's really really unfortunate mm. so that's about the power of power in the name of jesus okay so let's move on if you have questions you can ask uh, later as well let's come to the next weapon so the next weapon that we have is the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit uh, is there a question is there a question you can ask rupas i'm oh, sorry i couldn't hear you ha huh? meaning deadly poison okay uh see it just means that when we are going to serve god and if we experience any dangers it will not harm us okay like if you um, recall in the book of acts um paul right paul he gets bitten by a viper and uh, even if that happens like over there obviously people who are bitten by that viper they die it's venomous okay that viper is venomous and people die but nothing happens to him and when nothing happens to him uh, the people look at him and they say the island of malta they look at him and say uh, we think he's a god he's a god because it can't happen somebody who's bitten has to die it it's exactly what mark 16 says when we are going to serve the lord if at all some such dangers come to us it will not harm us we can immediately pray we can cancel it will not affect our bodies does that make sense great thank you not every time okay so you can't go and put yourself put your hand in the fire and try to test it don't do that don't test god yeah anything don't take it literally but it is literal no yeah you should not test it it will happen in that situation not all the time fine okay great so we said the next weapon is the power of the holy spirit so we read that the holy spirit um who dwells in us anoints us okay what is anointing anointing abhishek what is abhishek hey abhishek is in hindi for those of us who are from other countries and wondering what that word is it's anointing in hindi so what is anointing set apart okay ha huh? what is anointing holy spirit is in us and holy spirit also anoints us so what is anointing just a simple description anointing power okay power yeah anointing is power it brings power so when we look at the um, okay anointing means power presence of god power presence uh okay god's presence so these are the answers that we got online when we look at the old testament anoint when god told you know anoint uh, the priest the word anoint means smear okay smear smear is nothing but you know we take cream cream uh, when we get ready you just take some cream whatever sunscreen and you just put it what are you doing you're smearing something you're smearing something that is the literal meaning of anoint is that you take some material and you kind of put it so in the old olden times they used to put oil anoint with oil smear oil on that person to signify that god had chosen them for a ministry like a king anoint them put oil on them or you know a high priest 
or uh, a prophet anointing so this is symbolic putting that oil on them is symbolic and what they were actually doing was when they did this put the oil it was symbolic of the power of the holy spirit coming upon that person okay and then we know the works of god were done through those people like if you look at elija elisha okay such mighty miracles they did how did they do it they did it by the anointing of the holy spirit so when one is anointed when the holy spirit comes and covers right that person in the old testament it's like that holy spirit comes and covers that person okay then all the miracles used to happen but today the privilege that we have is holy spirit is inside in old testament times that was not the case now all the believers have holy spirit inside us and also when we are baptized in the holy spirit the holy spirit comes upon so there are two things one is holy spirit inside holy spirit on holy spirit on us is what we generally refer to anoint to as the anointing okay the power of god the power of god that has been smeared or put on us that covers us now the anointing will work um it, and in other words anointing can also be described as the power and the presence of the holy spirit we say oh this person is anointed why they're carrying the power and the presence of the holy spirit right uh, and we can see that in what happens whether it's the ministry of the word or whether it is in the prayer whether it is in the release of healings miracles gifts so the anointing will release the power and the presence of the holy spirit will release all these amazing works in our midst so here is the good news every believer the bible says is anointed we have the anointing of god we all they function differently that's okay but we do carry the anointing of the holy spirit so when the spirit when the power and presence of god is upon us we can see demonic works destroyed okay uh let's look at uh, matthew chapter 12 and verse 28 okay matthew chapter 12 verse 28 where jesus cast out a demon when he cast out the demon the people who were watching him were wondering how did he do this how did he cast out the demon and he answers them in matthew 12 28 he says i did it by the spirit of god i did it by the spirit of god so the spirit of god carries the power to destroy the devil to destroy what he's doing whether uh, demon possession or oppression or sickness is manifest whatever it is by the spirit of god we can destroy it or by the anointing we can destroy it and that is why we as individuals should grow in the anointing so when we are walking strongly closely with the lord the anointing on our lives will increase right and then we will see all the works that god is able to do when we go we pray for someone we minister to someone right those things will happen similarly as a group of people we can be a church family or uh, you know a, a, a community when we pray together the anointing over that community also increases then demonic works will be destroyed so that's the way the power of the spirit or the power of the anointing works and we see in isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27 uh, can can we read it it's a very powerful uh, scripture isaiah 10 and verse 27 please read it in english and also read it in hindi just for the benefit of uh, you know everyone here who would like to read it in english isaiah 10 27 yeah yes isaiah 10 27 it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and you and the and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil yeah see 
so the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil so the this is all pictorial language for us meaning uh these words have a meaning and we have to understand the meaning yoke will be destroyed what is yoke yoke is burden okay in our case we are understanding burden as demonic oppression that is the burden that is falling on people that's the burden that has to be broken so the anointing oil is the presence of the holy spirit right so when the presence of the holy spirit comes what happens the burden will be broken so that is why when we pray for somebody right we sense the presence of god and suddenly they are free before that they were not free but the spirit of god came the anointing came touched them the burden was broken okay so we need the presence of the holy spirit we have to carry the presence of the holy spirit then we will see uh, the works of satan being destroyed around us i'll uh, quickly take uh, uh, brother kofi's question please go ahead yes sister. yes sister i would like to know as a believer at what point does the holy spirit comes in you and then at what point does it come upon you okay or yeah. it happens simultaneously uh -huh. yes um all right so as a believer I'm just uh, searching for some scripture references. You'll probably find it in the notes of um, the course Holy Spirit. I think it's there in the book of Titus, where we are born by the regeneration of the spirit, it says. Okay, so, regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. So it reveals to us that the Holy Spirit has a role to play in us being born again. Uh, and we are reminded when Paul talks to the Corinthian church, uh, he says, don't you know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we recognize that the Holy Spirit is already involved in us being born again and uh, the holy spirit comes to dwell inside of us the moment we are born again now think about this in john chapter 20 okay john chapter 20 jesus died jesus rose up from the dead he meets his disciples and what he does is scripture tells us he breathes on the disciples okay receive ye the holy spirit but that is not the baptism of the holy spirit because Baptism of the Holy Spirit is Acts chapter 2. But he's saying, receive the Holy Spirit. What is the meaning of that? See, till that time, they were not born again. Because Jesus never died. We can only be born again when we accept the finished work of the cross. So even the disciples of Jesus, they were not born again. Isn't it? And when Jesus says, receive ye the Holy Spirit, he breathes on them. What happened is they they became born again by receiving the Holy Spirit in John chapter 20. But even when they were born again, what did Jesus tell them in Acts 1? He says, wait, wait, right? You shall receive the power from on high and you shall be my witnesses, all of uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So he's basically revealing to them that there is a separate experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that is when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So Kofi, when we are born again, Holy Spirit comes within us. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit comes upon us. These are two separate experiences. I hope it is clear. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
So when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are filled with the your uh, you receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we receive the Holy right? Spirit. So that is something happens by choice when you are saved and you receive. Yes. But the baptism of Holy Spirit does it happen by our choice or is it like in God's will in His time He baptizes us? Um. So, see, that is something for us to desire. Because uh, when you, when you see how God led them into the first baptism of the Spirit, they were seeking it. They were praying. They were waiting on the Lord to receive it. So I do believe that it's not automatic. It does happen automatic sometimes. At least it feels like that. Like you know, uh, sometimes people just get ba baptized without even understanding it much. But in general, I think when people are wanting it, desiring it, that's when it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't want it, uh, then it doesn't happen. It it doesn't happen. Like even in my practical experience, I've seen that uh, there have been a few people who've said, "Actually, I don't want it," but then I told them, "No, you attend Holy Spirit class. You listen. There's a small teaching. Then we will pray for you." They already told me they don't want it. So after the teaching, also when we prayed, all the others received. They didn't receive. Because it, and then I thought to myself, I should never do this again. If somebody does not want it, I cannot force them to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe see, we may also have uh, some blocks. I don't know why, but yeah, there are people who who. Uh, who don't want at least they say they don't want even though they are believers so, anyway so sure so that's a little bit about the spirit of god so what we'll do right now is we will uh, go in for a break and uh, we shall come back at 10 a.m and then we will continue thank you